If you're new to home brewing, if you really want to get into starting to make your own beverages, and you want to make a bit of beer easily, what's the easiest way? A lot of people have that question. If you have that question too, this is the answer. There's been a lot of great innovation in home brewing in the past 10 years, and one of them is these, fresh work kits, which make the process of brewing so much easier because all you really need to do is ferment. If you can make a can of soup, if you can make top ramen, you can make your own delicious craft beers and it's super easy to do with the new Keg King Pressure Ferment Starter Kit. That Pressure Ferment Starter Kit that we offer is going to make the process simple for you, the new brewer, plus you're going to love what you make because it's authentic tasting, fresh, and you're going to want to share it with your friends. So before we get into this really quick, what is wort? Wort or vert is the unfermented beer, which is basically sugary water from the malt uh, mixed with the bitterness of hops. So in the case of these kits, they're a little different to the ones that you might know that are extract. A lot of people have started with extract for years, but these are the new king of fast beer, fast brewing process. If you like dark beers, there's porters and stouts. If you like big hoppy beers, there's IPAs and pale ales that have all the hop goodness you want. And if you just want something that's normal beer, sessionable, very bangable beer, you've got all sorts of great fizzy yellow varieties of lager that you can create and they all taste authentic. Why? Because they haven't been reduced into a syrup. They are exactly what comes out of the brewery kettle. It's packaged up hot and it's ready for you to use. So with the pressure ferment starter kit, these are all the boxes you're gonna get over here, which include all these items, but I'm gonna tell you about them really quick, so let's unbox them. So these are the items that are inside. You're gonna have a tank for your chubby fermenter, and there's already instruction videos on how to put this thing together, so I'll refer you to those if you wanna know how to put the lid assembly together, it's really simple. This is your gas cylinder, the hydrometer, which is gonna tell you how much alcohol you've created in that fermentation that you're doing, a jar of cleaner, some sanitizer, which is super important for keeping everything sanitary. Of course, you're gonna have a tap and a disconnect for being able to come out of your fermenter and use it as a keg at the end of fermentation, and this regulator, which is gonna sit on the gas bottle to be able to feed both carbonation and headspace pressure for serving. That's it. Oh, also, one more thing, you're gonna get our fancy really low profile, nothing else like it on the market, best little spunding valve there is, the spundy, which is gonna fit on top of your fermenter during fermentation. It controls the pressure that's inside of the fermenter during fermentation and releases gas during fermentation to be able to keep this pressure fermenter working at its best. So let's get this fermenter all set up to be prepared for fermenting. So the assembly video is already online. Watch that to see how to assemble this pressure fermenter. It'll also take you through how to check it for leaks after you get it set up. So you'll pressure check it to make sure it's nice and tight. Now, let's just get rid of all the stuff that we're not gonna need and focus on getting the fermenter ready to receive our fermentables. So we're ready to get started. We're gonna add a couple of things into this fermenter to make it nice, clean, and sanitary. Now you won't have to clean it because it's brand new, but you will have to sanitize it. So in order to sanitize, we're gonna mix up about five liters of sanitizer in a jug that we have. So a couple other household items you might find handy when you're home brewing is a funnel, makes it a little easier to fill things if you're trying to get them into narrow spaces, a spray bottle, which you can add some of your sanitizer to to help you spray surfaces and keep things nice and tidy as you're preparing your fermentables. And of course, the sanitizer, which is here. Our kit will probably come with one or the other of these sanitizers. There's a no foaming and a foaming. They both do an excellent job of sanitation and sanitization inside of your fermenters and in your brewery spaces. So whichever one of these you get, just mix it according to the directions. In this case, we're gonna use the non-foaming sanitizer in our five liters, which is about 12.5 milliliters of this. There's a dosing mechanism on the bottle, makes it very simple. Always add your acid sanitizers to the water, not the other way around. So we'll go ahead and measure 12.5 in here, which is just between the 10 and the 15. 
and that's an accurate dose. Don't, it doesn't matter if you're a little bit off um, by a mil or two, it's not gonna make too much of a difference. And these are childproof, so make sure to push down on them when you open them. Add that acid sanitizer to the water, just like that. Go ahead, unscrew your lid on your fermenter. Pop this off, put it to the side for a moment. Grab your funnel. You don't need to use a funnel, just makes it easier to put the liquid in. Go ahead, drop the assembly for the lid back into place. Now let's get that sealed up real quick. Make sure it's nice and tight because you're now going to shake this so that it has contact with all the surfaces on the inside. Our Australian made and Australian tested sanitizers are really effective at their jobs. So you can always rely on them to do the job of protecting their surfaces, either getting them really clean or getting them really sanitary. So that's the Atomic 15 line of chemicals and sanitizers through Keg King that make brewing and home brewing so much easier. You can rely on them every single batch. You can leave it or rock it back and forth if you don't want to carry it or hold on to it. And that should give it lots of contact with all the surfaces underneath the lid and everywhere. But what's the one thing in here that hasn't been sanitized? The floating dip tube assembly and the place where the beer, when we're finished with it, is gonna come up through the post. So to sanitize that, we're gonna push a bit of sanitizer out of here. So we're gonna need our gas bottle. Go ahead and find your gas cylinder, attach your regulator. Attach the tubing that came with it and the gray disconnect. Now ours might look a little different with this push-in fitting, but it's super simple to put together. Once you've got it hooked up to the gas bottle and make sure that this nut on the gas cylinder is nice and tight so that you have no leaks, you'll be able to hook up and add a little bit of pressure to the sanitizer inside this pressure fermenter. To do that, just quickly go ahead and with this nice and loose, there's no pressure coming out of here but we're just going to bump our low pressure gauge up to about 10 PSI, which is all we need. So you'll see that there's the black line below the number 20 on your low pressure gauge. You're gonna hook up your gray gas disconnect to the gas post, which is the one with the little nick out of the side of the bottom of it. So that's your gas post. That's what the gray disconnect on this line is gonna fit to. Go ahead, drop it on, you'll hear it now adding some pressure into this pressure vessel. This is the easy way to get the sanitizer back up and out of here. So in order to get it back out, and you can leave that hooked up if you want to, but now that there's some pressure in here and no leaking, we're able to go ahead and run some sanitizer back out. So we're gonna run the sanitizer now, attach the black disconnect from your picnic tap assembly onto the liquid post like this. It'll lock into place. And now if we need to, you'll see we can run the sanitizer back out of it. So this makes it really simple for us to be able to go ahead, take some of that nice sanitizer that we've got mixed up in there, put it into a spray bottle, and now you'll have an easy way to sanitize surfaces as you're going along throughout your brewery processes. Now you won't need to do a lot of this every single time that you're home brewing, but you will find that it's very simple to have a bottle of sanitizer at your ready whenever you're in your brewery setting. Go ahead and relieve all the pressure. We don't have to run all the sanitizer out through the post assembly and the dip tube. Relieve the pressure. And once we've relieved the pressure, we can pour the rest of this out into our funnel and into our jug. You can just pour the rest of this out carefully so you're not pouring it all over your shoes. And the inside floating pickup tube and the lid can just sit like that until we're ready to go ahead and use them. So, we've got a sanitized fermenter ready for our fermentables. What beer are we gonna make? Let's choose one now. I'll show you how simple it is. So no matter what work kit you decide that you're gonna make, just pick one and be careful when you open it. Don't use sharp tools, especially if it's the ones in the bags, 
because you could tear the bag before you get it open from the box. So just locate an edge of the tape, go ahead, pull it off, and inside we're going to find our big, lovely, fermentable wort kit. There's a cap on the end of these, and that makes it really simple for us to go ahead and open. So we'll go ahead and open it. Now, it's not going to come out because there's still a pull tab that you have to open in here. But to make sure we keep everything sanitary, make sure you have your spray bottle so that you can spray a little bit of sanitizer onto the inside of that cap. So make sure that you have a nice, clean, sanitary funnel to pour through. If you have a wide mouth fermenter like our Apollo, you probably won't even need a funnel because it's so nice and wide, it's easy to go ahead and add your kit into this. So, my recommendation is if you're strong, you can easily do this. If you're not that strong, you can move it to the edge of a table where you have a bit of leverage, and then you're gonna grab it like this just so that you have a nice, easy place to be able to work this kit. Right? Now, before you open it, Make sure you're in the position where you're ready to fill it. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and try to do it right here in front of you. I would highly suggest moving your fermenter to ground level to be able to do this. But I'm going to go ahead and just so that you can see it today from this video, I'm going to do it at this level here. Go ahead, pull the tab. Make sure you've got a good grip on this thing. And that's all that's involved. Look at that, you're making beer. Now after you've added your water, you don't really need to stir, but if you do decide you want to mix everything together nicely, you can use the included long-handled stirring device but make sure that you've had it in the sanitizer up until the point where it comes into contact with the liquid. Anything at this point that's gonna to touch the beer needs to be sanitary. So, it's not beer yet until we add the yeast. The recommended yeasts are always on the packaging of the fresh work kits. So in our case, our kit could require USO5 or Cal001 are the recommended yeasts, but in this case, we can just experiment because brewing is experimentation. And we're gonna go ahead and choose to use Oslo from Bluestone Yeast, which is located here in Melbourne. So we're really happy to have a good partnership with them because they do an excellent job of providing us with fresh yeast. And these are big yeast cell counts, which means they're gonna do the job of fermentation faster and better. So sanitize the package, sanitize your scissors, cut the package open. Go ahead and just pour it straight in. Make sure to get all of it out of there without being dirty about it. That's it, right now you've made beer. So let's get this sealed up and all set for fermentation with pressure control on top. It's simple. Locate your lid assembly, right? And because you still have sanitizer in it, if you want to get the sanitizer out, Go ahead and hook up your tap, and then just open the tap and run out all the sanitizer from inside of it. Unattach the tap, put the lid assembly on top of your fermenter. Seal the O-ring nice and tight in the lid so it sits nice and flat. You're gonna screw on the collar so it holds it down nice and firm. And there's one more thing we need to do, pressure control. As this starts to ferment, the yeast are gonna start making gas. That gas needs to be released or it builds up in here. That's where the spundy comes in. So this is going to control the pressure inside the vessel. We're gonna to wanna to keep about 10 PSI or under, somewhere around eight to 10 is right for ales, 15 for lagers is pretty common as pressure settings for fermentation. So all you have to do with your spundy, take it out of the box, wind back the black valve tip just a little bit. It works just like the disconnects that go on here for the tap and for the regulator, 
but you're gonna go and put this, because it's gray, onto the gas post, the one with the notch at the bottom. Simply go ahead, lift the collar, click it into place, and go ahead and set it to somewhere around 10 PSI. So that's it, you've made beer. As soon as you added the yeast to this vessel, it's gonna begin to ferment. But in order for it to ferment, we wanna talk about temperature control really quick. So if you have a place in your household that can hold 18 to 22, maybe 23 degrees, you can do ale yeasts. You're gonna to need to provide some sort of temperature controlled environment. So you can use a heat belt, which is what we're probably going to do with this as we're not gonna be here working with the fermentation. It's gonna allow the yeast to be warm and they're gonna do their job. So that is gonna be controlled through the pressure vessel here and this valve tip. So with the spundy, setting this to 10 PSI is simple. You can either use the blue PRV or you can use the black valve tip to hold that 10 PSI or eight PSI for this fermentation. We'll go ahead and let this fermentation happen now and monitor it as it's going. And then at the end of it, we'll be able to hook up our tap and be able to fill our glasses and be thankful for the invention of beer. How cool was that fermentation time lapse, right? So you get to see the whole entire thing, all the action, the yeast doing their job, turning your beverage into magic. So now it's time to make sure that that fermentation is ended. So to make sure that it's ended, we're gonna do a quick hydrometer check. Now you get a hydrometer with this kit and that hydrometer does come in a storage container. You can remove the top of the storage container and the little bits of cotton from inside of it and you can use that to float your hydrometer, which is this device here, right? Or to make it easier, you can get a polypropylene flask, which is a little bit wider and holds a little bit more. So you get a bit more of an accurate sample. You can remove your spunding valve. We're gonna go ahead and hook up the liquid disconnect to the liquid post. And then once you've hooked that up, and I've sprayed some sanitizer on this before and, and on the disconnect underneath it as well, once you've hooked that up, you can either decant some of the liquid into something larger, grab that sample, and actually with those samples, you want to degas them a little bit so they're not full of CO2 that's gonna push the hydrometer up. Now your hydrometer itself, if you've got a small vessel like this, you might wanna put it on a plate so it's not too messy. And the hydrometer is just going to sit in the liquid just like that. So this is your hydrometer reading. Where you're gonna read it is where the glass float is intersecting the liquid on the top here. That line uh, is exactly where you want to pick up the number that is your final gravity. Now, if that number is twice in a row on two different days, the same number, you're finished with your fermentation. So a nice low fermentation uh, that's finished, like a finished gravity could be like one point uh, 010 or under that 1.009, 0.07, 008, somewhere in there. These are all finishing gravities. So all we need to do now is put this fermenter into the fridge. So if you have a fridge and you can drop it down in temperature to about one or two degrees, perfect. In this case, we've got one of our fridges, uh, the series four fridge actually. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead, open this up. We've set it to one degree and put it in. Now, one more thing you can do because you're gonna be getting this nice and cold is you can hook up your gas bottle at this point to your regulator, set it for 10 PSI. Um, use your gas disconnect to attach to the gas post of your fermenter. Click in and it will be distributing the gas into the beverage as the temperature drops. We're gonna leave this for about two to three days. We'll come back, it'll be carbonated, it'll be much more clear. You'll be able to see through the beer just a little bit better. 
and you'll see the clarity is gonna improve quite a bit in whatever beverage we've made. So we're now at the best part of the whole fermentation process. We get to drink this beer. And since we've done such a great job doing it so easily, pouring it should be easy as well. So to get into it, all you need to do is you've already gotten this cold. We've just taken this one out of the fridge. So it's sitting at a very nice temperature. The liquid in it is probably about one degree. And we just need to find that tap that we have. And of course, if you need a little bit of extra pressure when you're serving, you can always attach your gas disconnect from your, from your gas cylinder. So now find yourself a glass. And of course, if you don't have glasses, Keg King's got a great array of glasswares. So in this case, let's go ahead and pour. Make sure that you always tilt the glass on an angle so you don't get too much foam. And now you can drink bright, beautiful, fresh beer direct from your fermenter, which is now also your keg. Isn't that beautiful? We left this beverage for about two days in the cold with the gas on it at 10 PSI to get it to be this carbonated. Beautiful head on it. Ah, the aromas are heavenly. So enjoy your fresh work kit and obviously have a little taste, see how you're done. I wanna do this again and again and again. There's so many of them to try out. The whole range of them are available through Keg King. We have tons of them for you to check out. They make a great beverage. This is a fantastic beer, and all of them make fantastic beers. You're gonna be the best brewer you know quickly when you start off with fresh work kits. They taste authentic. Everything about them's just banging. I love them. So a lot of people might wonder how long can your beer stay in here on top of that yeast bed? Well, a lot of our brewers and a lot of us here at Keg King know that we haven't really had any issues for going long. There's been some of us that have done this for a couple of months before we've even had the fermenter empty. But if you wanted to, you can move your beverage out of here and you can get into kegging really affordably with our getting into kegging kit, which means that you can move the beverage out of this vessel into a little keg, put the keg into the fridge so that you can enjoy that and drink from it, get your fermenter back, make another kit. So check them out from Keg King, Fresh Work Kits, the pressure ferment, easy pressure fermenting kit from us, which is so easy to use. All you gotta do is just go through these steps and you'll get to this. Cheers, brewers. Thanks for watching. So let's hope I don't soak absolutely everything in sticky, beautiful, sweet wort from All In Brewing. There was a bit of pressure in there.